my name's Tom McEwen and I am an event rider based at Gatcan Park Stables in Gloucestershire. So my background is my dad is a vet, um, he's an equine vet and my mum used to show jump when I was younger, oh, I don't remember it so much. And basically my mum has helped me all the way through the years along with my dad, especially being my vet's been very helpful. Uh, and it's all come about from a pony called Con, uh, he was ridden by Matthew Wright, um, who was an event rider. Uh, and he started him off and then went to a lady called Sally Dawson up in Manchester and then we got him in his twilight years, or his later years, twilight years would be the wrong way to describe it. And he really got me into eventing, he was the most amazing jumper, did all the pony club championships and that really just got me hooked and even though my height would be more suitable probably to a national hunt jockey, uh, I just got hooked on eventing and that was, that was me hooked and from there I sort of always did it through schools, did some pony teams, missed out a few teams through uh, doing A-levels and things and then came back to it a little bit later on in life so yeah, got hooked from quite an early age. So I chose eventing as a kid for the cross country, uh, it definitely wasn't quite for the dressage, dressage just definitely had to be learnt and still learning. Yes, yeah, so I just really enjoyed the thrill uh, of going cross country and being at one with the horse. They love it, there's no way you could possibly make them do some of the stuff that is put out in front of them and you end up having a natural ebb and flow with them and it's a really hard thing to describe to, in sort of layman terms but it's a bit like having that feel on a motorbike I'd imagine out on the open road it's just very free flowing and natural and, and comes very smoothly so building up a relationship with a horse cross country is quite special. Probably the biggest achievement for me would be the Olympics still because it's the only thing that really the wider public understand of sporting achievements within our world, I've got a lot of sort of friends that are non-horsey and actually some of the stuff that I'm doing they have absolutely no clue what I'm on about. To show them actually what I've been doing and achieving and for me going somewhere like Tokyo is ultra special and especially with someone like Toledo de Cursor who I've had since he was about six years old. So all the way through with, with him has been really special and he's been the first real high quality top horse and he's been amazing so yeah, forever thankful. Yeah, so for the heat in Tokyo, we actually were real lucky that we had a very hot summer here. Granted, not humid, but it was it was warm enough. Um, so for ourselves, we went to Bisham Abbey and we went in the heat chamber, which was fairly horrific. Um, the idea behind with the horses was to wear rugs on the gallops, for example, wear rugs in work, and I decided not to do that. Which is now gonna sound really inappropriate because obviously we were told to do one thing. I thought he was better. He's a brilliant horse that loves it. I don't want to put him under a different type of stress, or I'm not saying it's stress, but sweat. I know he's game, I know he's fit, I know he's ready. So for me, it's about getting him muscularly strong, feeling fit and well, so actually he can freshen up building up to there. For me, it was more about the journey out there than it was the humidity. They did the most amazing job about, how, about having us in the right times of the day. Uh, like cross country was really early in the morning, the same with the dressage and jumping being in the evening. Uh, and actually I think we got very lucky when we got to Japan that actually it wasn't as humid or as hot as it could be. So I think in that way we were very lucky, but for me it was just about having a fit horse because I don't think I'd be the best in humidity, but if I felt happy and fit and well before going, I think that would be at least the starting point. I think uh, for me badminton is very different to Olympics. I've only ever done one Olympics and I'd love to do more, but obviously it was Covid year and there was no one there, so that does make a huge change. Uh, for me badminton is different. Uh, a lot of people are there for the equestrian side and obviously a lot of people are there for shopping but those crowds are hard to explain to anyone when you're going around sort of 10 deep all the way around people really understanding what you're doing what you're feeling uh, even on the dressage day you can hear the mutters and sort of some places you'd be like what are they on about but actually there you can actually hear and you're actually they're understanding what's going on and the, sort of the processes behind it and what everyone's done to get there and and also they really appreciate how amazing the horses are so for me that's probably the main difference. For me also now it's a very different test for them. Um, the Olympics is, is more a four star, uh, very based on more uh, a long short format, what I'd call it, very intense. Whereas badminton is back to the old this year, it's the longest course you can have, it's 12 minutes. So that's as, as far as we can go at a horse trials and at venting. So it's a test of stamina, it's a very different field to ride. Um, obviously with a longer course comes more space for the cross country, so that's a lot more galloping. So yeah, it's all about learning to break up and um, change the fences and obviously Badminton is renowned for, for its rather large fences and, and um, amazing crowds. So uh, how I'd go about walking the course at Badminton. So basically we walk it on, it's 12 minutes this year from what I've seen from uh, a video. 
so it's, it's our maximum length. We, work, we run at 570 metres a second, uh, so not on the first course walk. The first course walk would always be a sea and view, walk some strides, but realistically to see what's out there. Uh, this year I've only got Toledo de Cursa going, so it's very much primed and thinking just about him, whereas last year I had both two horses going with CHF Coolizer and they've definitely got a different stride pattern and way of going, so always splitting my courses up if I had two horses. Uh, so basically then I'd look at, obviously there's, I'm going to try and be competitive, so it's then for me splitting up the course in the best way. So there'd be a few areas where I would have thought there'd be a, fen there'd be a minute that we walk with a wheel that probably only one fence comes into play. So realistically no, there I know that I'd probably be behind the clock and be building uh, again to try and get back again on the time. Whereas there'd be other sections, i.e. the lake, that would be quite intense and it's quite often now quite loopy to give the crowd a little bit more time um, to view the horses coming past. So it's a little bit like walking courses and lines like that. I've known Toledo for years now so we've got an amazing partnership so I sort of roughly know what he's going to do where but that doesn't mean that you're not going to make a mistake. Um, for example last year I made a mistake because I came too quick to the solar panels and uh, cost us having a fall but Realistically, in hindsight, all I need to do is come a little bit slower and collected and just change a few things. So this year also at Badminton, it's taking a slightly new layout. So I'd always know that from the Vicarage V area, which is the furthest point away realistically from the main arena, which is start and finish, you'd always lose a lot of time there. And then you'd gain it up the closer you came back to home, but there would also be a point where you couldn't gain any more time. Uh, that's sort of more looking at the time aspect. Uh, the course aspect, uh, I've got a great draw this year, I'm 48th out of however many starters so I've got plenty of time to watch a few horses and I do quite often like watching a couple of horses go around and getting the idea and feel of it. Uh, but it's a little bit like finding my lines, finding a rhythm and actually doing everything that we practice not with Toledo in the school because he doesn't like doing school work but what we do cross country schooling and, and what we've done at competitions so it's finding the right lines that are positive enough without taking too much risk and just getting everywhere that he understands each and every question. Pressure's a funny one, because I wouldn't say people probably looking at me from the outside don't think they'd probably get too nervous, but actually for me, uh, you obviously everyone gets nervous, nervous, excited, nervous, nervous, however you want to look at it. But I get more nervous about letting the horses down. Uh, so for me, I know all the work we've done. I wouldn't go if we didn't think we were, were good enough uh, already. Uh, for, the, for the task or questions ahead. So for me, I know like Toledo de Cursa, probably one of the best horses in the world. And for me, I just want to do the best job. So it's reading the lines right, right on the cost country so you don't let them down, making sure that actually the nerves don't affect me. So then on dressage, I can perform as well as I can so we can get the most out of our test to get each and every point back. So, and we can do as well as we can. Um, and realistically, I just don't really want to let him down as a horse. Um, and that's, that's sort of probably my main reasons for nerves. So we're really lucky at Gatcombe that we have got hills everywhere. So we get up and down hills. Uh, fitness wise, they canter twice a week. Um, we're very lucky again on the opposite side of the golf course, which is uh, a good 10, 10, 15 minute hack is um, the Gallops Aston Farm that we use. Uh, they will do that. They go up the Gallops sort of twice a week um, for a few months building up. So it's a slow, slow progression like we would do for ourselves in the gym. Uh, along with that there's plenty of hacking and obviously mainly their core work is done around their flat work and and their jumping in the school but all of that comes along with hacking um, as well so it'll be up in the hills around the bowl here like i say we're really fortunate with the hills but it's a, a slow build up so they'd be schooling sort of two three times a week and that might include a jump once a week um, we don't jump our horses as much as other people do but that's our, our way of doing it and we've learned I feel from the best of being at Mark Todd's when I was younger and Rodney Prowse when I was even younger again so I've learned from pretty historic figures in eventing how, how, how to get your horses fit so I've, I've learned and even though they were probably more based on like an old old school style of uh, roads and tracks and steeplechase I think it's real important to have the horses fit and to come out muscularly strong for the last day of show jumping. For me, the horses can only go around so much, they've got their own fitness to do, but you need to then be able to work on yourself outside. So yeah, it's not so much about building the guns, it's <laughs> a little bit more about all um, sort of core activity and actually trying to be that little bit further ahead than everybody else. And it, it doesn't always come from just sitting and riding and as you put in on the saddle, it also comes in from other areas as well.
If I had to pick a favourite Lemur product, for me, being an inventor, this would be our most used one, and it's the Cross Country Boot Shock Air. Uh, as you can see, this is not fresh out of the packet. This is probably a few seasons old, and I can promise you these take a lot of wear and tear from the horses. They use it a lot, they go in the washing machine, um, they're really used and abused by us in, in the nicest possible way, and for us, it's great protection for the horse, while there's great airflow for their legs and tendons. And for me, I wouldn't go cross country without them.